Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. The purpose of the show is to help you realize that you are not alone. You are in control of your life. It does not matter what your lot in life is or where you came from. We have all felt pain, suffering, hurt, abandonment, loneliness, hopelessness, etc. This show helps you to take those dark moments and turn them around to create a whole new you. We were taught to be a certain way, act a certain way, conform to society. Being socialized is not bad, but it can put constraints on us. The guests I bring on the show are telling you their story of where they came from, the obstacles that they overcame, and where they are today. They are sharing the tools they use to recreate themselves and their life. Some of the guests are still in their process, beginning a new process, comfortable in their process, or even reinventing themselves. They are giving you tools that they use to gain insight into themselves, to take care of their, to take control of their life and become the person they are today. On podcast.kathleenmflanagan.com is a list of guests that have been on the show with their contact information. I am aware that you may not, you may resonate with one or several of them. My desire is that this becomes a community where you have access to the people you wish to align with and utilize the tools that they have, as well as the tools that are on KathleenMFlanagan.com. I am a certified coach who can help reach your dreams. I help you to learn how to rely on and believe in your unlimited potential and power. I already know that you've experienced flashes of intuitive knowledge and big thinking that has you wondering just how far could I fly if only. I'm here to help stir, help you stir up the innate knowing and self-trust already instilled deep inside your soul. I help to, you to forge forward when, you, when the old you would rather give up and turn back. Awakeningspirit.com is an aromatherapy-based body care line that offers alternative healing and remedies that use natural and organic ingredients. We are offering a 40% discount by entering Brave TV into the coupon code. The products are guaranteed. If the, if the products are not working, please contact me and I will reformulate the blend specifically for you. Grandma's Natural Remedies.net is a CBD company that uses essential oils in every blend and either has broad spectrum or an isolate. Every product is tested and the lab results are on the website. We are offering a 20% discount by entering Brave TV in the coupon code. I start every show each week from with the tuning forts, I bring in love, happiness, and balance. This sets the tone for the show and brings out the best in both myself and my guest. Let's begin. I was supposed to have a guest on today and she did not show up for whatever reason. So it's just me. So I want to talk about pretty much where I've been, what's been going on in my life, because it's been a long time since I've actually shared a whole lot of what's happening in my life. The first major cool thing about what happened is on May 2nd, I became a number one bestseller on amazon.com in five categories for four days in a row. I was so thrilled. I wrote these books back in 2008, and this is the first book that I actually launched. And so I was really excited because Spirit had always said, do not launch the books until they're all published. And so that's exactly what I did. Now I've been selling the books, but I haven't actually done an official launch. And and then Saturday, I, I did another book signing. So I've been getting out in the world and doing things because, you know, some things you just can't do behind the computer anymore. So I'm getting out in the world. And I was just thrilled because, you know, I've always never stopped long enough to give myself credit for the things that I have done. And 
And I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that do the same thing. It's like on to the next. And it's like, yeah, I did that. So what else can I do? And that, that really diminishes part of who you are when you do that, because you're not giving yourself that value and to sit back and to take that in and embrace that. So as a result, I'm sitting here going, why do I feel a little off centered? And it's not that I'm off centered. What it is, is that is such, was such a powerful moment in my life that I actually elevated up into a higher frequency because I gave myself that credit and, and I was operating completely different than I normally operate as. Because when you go on to the next, you never think anything of it and you kind of stay in the same plateau that you've always been. But when you take that time to really embrace something that you did, that was a lot of hard work. And I'm telling you, writing a book, when I was told that writing a book is, is the easy part, and I thought, oh God, I don't think so. Um, yeah, actually I think it is now because the marketing now is a lot different and I have a lot of cool things that I wanna eventually bring out. I just haven't got it all dialed in in my brain yet. But the whole point that I realized is I was on a, a mastermind call a couple of hours ago and, and I'm like, just what is this angst that I'm kind of feeling, but it's not an angst, it's just kind of like numb. And then somebody said, you know, closing doors and opening doors. And I'm like, well, okay, I can get that. I can, I can see that happening in my life right now. And then the host actually made a comment about how she had changed the way she's been operating in her life. And I went, oh my God, that's exactly what it is. Because what I realized is during the time that I launched the book that we had this we sold our office condominium. We were supposed to have the balloon payment on May 1st and he didn't do it. He didn't pay it. So as I'm in the middle of a block book launch, I am making demands for the payment. I'm doing everything I have to do to protect our interest in the property, looking at what we have to do next, as far as evicting him, calling in the note, whatever it is. And, and I got very, it's a habit. Okay. We have habits. We live by habits all the time. So as I'm sitting here, I'm in this intense emotional place and I was just really scared and freaked out and traumatized and which is an old habit pattern of how I react when things don't always work out the way I think they should work out. Now it's probably the perfect way because we're going to get that much more money now because of, of his delinquency. And I know that he's going to pay us. I don't know when, but I know we will. And I have everything in place. So, you know, interest is accruing as of May 1st. And I'm fine with all of this. But I remember reaching out to somebody and said, I need help because I know what's going on. I understand what's happening to me, but I need help to just get through this. Like I needed to talk to somebody to get the angst out. And so... I did that and then I went to bed and then the next morning I talked to my business partner and he just watched me just process through the last of it. And he said, you know, this is such a beautiful thing to watch you process because I was in this gripping place, not that I was that fearful anymore, but it was still like here in my throat, like, you know, how dare you do this? I, you know, I deserve to be paid, that kind of thing. And I just had to get it away from me and go back into what I believe and what I know, which was, I'm here to do a mission. I know I'm gonna be, I know I'm taken care of. I know I'm protected. I know I'm safe. And what I realized is that this was a message for me to look at, okay, you still react out of trauma when something doesn't go your way. No big deal. It's just what it is. It's an observation. Then I had to look at, well, if I really want to be the fool in the tarot cards where I trust implicitly that I'm taken care of by God, then I need to actually demonstrate that. So that was another thing that came up for me is like, well, I'm not quite there yet. So I had to come, come back into my space and realize that I really am okay. I really am provided for. I am taken care of because through all that insanity in my head that was going on, I heard, you're safe. You'll get paid. Everything is as it should be. Just breathe and relax into it. So I did. But, when, but the other thing that happened, I think during that process, and I was unaware of it until today, was that because of that, I elevated my vibrational frequency again. 
And this is what happens when you start changing your patterns, when you start acknowledging certain habits that we have that we're, we're doing and changing and moving beyond that. So as I got this message when I was on this call, it was like, oh my God, that's what it is. I'm in unfamiliar territory because there's a point when we start growing and evolving and we keep going up the rungs of the ladder into a higher vibrational frequency. That doesn't mean we know what that frequency is or that we understand what's going on because it's an unfamiliar pattern. It's an unfamiliar frequency. So what I looked at is, okay, well, I know new doors are coming in because the thing that I heard, I think uh, several days after this event happened with the um, buyer was I was so dialed in on money and in this fear that I don't have any money, it was also what was happening is that this money is coming in in like truckloads. And that's what I felt. It's it's like within your greatest fear is also the greatest relief of whatever you're in fear of because we're designed to have what we want and what we need. So when that happened, I said, oh my God, because I put all this stuff into motion to start moving into a different direction and start getting my coaching business going on. But the thing that happened at the same time is when I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to be in a Buick down by the river, I'm, I'm out of money, whatever it is, I got my IRS, I got not the IRS, but I got my Department of Revenue check-in, I got money coming in from book sales, all sorts of things was showing that came in within days, within days. Actually, the one check came in the day before. I didn't open it until the next day. But the whole point was, is what was Spirit telling me? You're safe. Here's money. It may not be what you think you need or what you want. It doesn't matter. It's here. And it was like, well, thank you. Can I have more? And it, and it helped to put my mind and my heart at ease that I was really being taken care of. Because all I had to do right now is focus on today. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen in June because June isn't here yet. So if I have the money to make all of my bills this month, that's all that mattered. And that's exactly what I received was enough money to get to where I need that all my bills were taken care of for the month of May. And whatever money came in, it actually did what it was supposed to do. The other thing that came out of this also was that my business partner said, I will lend you the money if you need it. Not that I want to borrow money, but the whole point was that if I want, if I need the money, I am being taken care of again. And, the, and when we work ourselves into frenzies like that, that's when we have to stop and get, okay, come back, get off the stage of your drama because I was in drama. I mean, that's how I'm going to look at it is I got on the stage, got into the drama of my life and I was felt powerless. I think that's the word I was going for. I felt powerless. And in order to gain my power, because I kept saying, I need my power, I need my power. And I had to get off the stage so I could come back into empowerment. Well, we're gonna go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Welcome back everyone to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. When I was talking about needing to get off the stage, part of what that means, and I'm gonna explain this because it took me a while for me to fully understand we all have drama in our life and we create the drama. And most of the drama comes up right here, what's between our ears. And so what I learned years ago, a friend of mine kept telling me, get off the stage. And I said, but in order to create what you want, you need to be on the stage, be a participant in your life. But that's not what he was referring to. What he was referring to is I needed to get off the stage to get out of the drama of my head and start observing what's happening in my life. And when I just started observing what was happening in my life, I became very present in the now because that's all we have is now. We can fantasize about the future. We can dwell on the past, but then you're not living your life because you're either in your future or your past, but you're not here now. And being here now is where all the change occurs. So when I realized by getting off the stage, it meant that this was starting to dial out. I wasn't in that place of, confusion or lack, Felix is here. 
in case you want to see his face. That's, this is my Felix, okay? Who wants to be on TV. Anyways, he, um, what, what my friend had said was that once I get off the stage, I'm going to start being able to have different types of movement, different experiences, which was exactly what happened. Because I, when I got off, I started noticing that I had more power. There was more of a boundary. I was speaking up more for myself and I could observe the drama around me. Now that doesn't mean that things weren't happening in my life. And drama was always trying to suck me in, but I chose my best not to get into the drama of life. So when, when this buyer chose not to pay us, that was a habit that happened. Now I was present, but I couldn't go down this road because I'm in the middle of a book launch, which was beautifully orchestrated by spirit, in my opinion, because I probably would have gone down a rabbit hole that I don't know if I would have gotten out as fast, but I had to keep diverting my attention back to the launch. So as we're texting back and forth, then my business partner comes on and says things. So he's kind of chiming in every now and then because he's teaching a class. So, you know, he's kind of observing when he has the opportunity. So I had to not go in the drama. And that's exactly what I did. And that's a habit. Everything we do in our life is a habit. I don't think we're capable of breaking habits. Not all habits are bad. So let me preface that. Not all habits are bad, but I don't think I think, I don't think we can, I don't know. I'm really working through this one to see if there's a way to break habits, but when we're emotionally charged, our habits are coming from our emotions. It doesn't, we don't think about doing a habit because we're not thinking, but when, if we're triggered, what do we do? Our first response is something that we've always done in our past. And mine always came from trauma. Like, oh my God, I'm going to die. You know, I'm going to be hurt. I'm this, I'm, you know, I, I went down this really melodramatic place, but that is how I've always responded to life, my life, because I was traumatized as a child. And I went through trauma for many, many, many years. Now I understand the trauma that I was in, but that doesn't mean the habit or the reactions or that gut wrenching emotion is there because we're, even though I'm present, the, your emotions are what trigger everything you do. I mean, anything you want in your life comes through your emotions. If you don't want something, it still comes through your emotions because that's what's actually leading us. That's why when I say get off the stage and get out of here, then you become more of a bystander. And by being a bystander, you actually can actually steer your vehicle in a different direction. You're not necessarily going down the same old patterns, the same old, this is how I operate in life and that's just the way it is and it'll never change. I know most people don't change and they don't want to change, but I believe we can change because I have been a, in a constant state of change my whole life. Yes, do I do things habitually? Hell yeah, we all do. I mean, getting up in the morning and having coffee and going to the bathroom and brushing your teeth and taking a shower and getting dressed, that's a habit. That's not a bad habit. It's just a habit. It's what we do. I mean, how many of us actually get up and do something different first thing in the morning? Not too many of us because I look at having a morning routine is really critical. Now I can modify my morning routine like, oh, I think I'm going to go for a walk today or I'm going to add another routine to my exercise program, whatever it is, another machine, that kind of thing. I mean, that's modif modifying whatever that is. But I also choose to have that quiet time in the morning just so I can, like, what am I supposed to do today? What are the expectations? What do I need to accomplish today? And some days, like this weekend, I mean, I come out doing a book signing and I didn't do much Sunday. Now, I wasn't completely like, boobed out, so to speak, where I was, was so exhausted, I just was very quiet. Now, not as quiet as I have been, but I was still quiet because when you're on stage, so to speak, doing a book signing and people are coming in the day before Mother's Day at Barnes and Noble, and you're sitting there and you're greeting and you're bringing people into the area with eight other authors and you're trying to find out, well, and you're talking to them to learn a little bit about who they are, what they like to read, you know, what are they here for kind of thing. That, that takes a drain on you. 
So I know how to honor myself when I need to rest. I know when I need to be quiet. And so far, even though this is another busy week, it's not doesn't feel as busy as last week, but it's still a busy week. I still, in those in-between times, I'm getting things done, but I'm also resting. I'm, I'm wanting to hear what's coming in. So I'm supposed to be working with my coach tomorrow about doing like an enrollment call and I've got all the pieces together. It's just not organized in any form. I mean, part of it is, part of it isn't. And then I added more stuff to it, but I have to incorporate it. And, you know, if I get to it, I get to it. If I don't, I don't, because I've decided it's okay where I'm at. I have moved mountains and the woman today sent me a private message and said, sometimes maybe it's not about you moving the mountain. Maybe it's about you having people help you move the mountain. You know, where you're sitting back, where you need to receive the messages and let other people do some of this work that's really hard for you to do. And it's not like it's hard, so to speak, but it's what's not my genius. My genius is listening to the messages coming in. My genius is talking from the heart. It's helping you to remember who you are. It's helping you to refocus your attention, to create the life that you want, to create the dreams that you want to manifest. That's what I'm good at. Social media, it's a necessary evil in my mind. It's got to be done. It's not something I want to do. I, do. I know how to do it. It's just that when it comes to the creative part of what what I want to say in in the, for an um, a post or something. Sometimes it's just not there. I usually do that when I'm seem like I'm in the zone. And so you learn to find your rhythms, and finding your rhythm and what works for you is what that's how you become empowered with yourself as well. I have found that the more I'm okay with me the easier my life gets. So when I was kind of thinking, why do I feel like I'm not moving? Why do I feel like I'm in the doldrums? But I'm not in any of that. I'm just in a quiet place. I'm replenishing my energy after what after Saturday at the book signing, after launching my book. I mean, that took a tremendous amount of energy to do that and then kept running for that entire week on top of it. So I just... We have to give ourselves a break. And if somebody has an issue with you not moving forward, well, that's their, that's a them problem. That's not a you problem. And when you know yourself well enough, then you can just sit back and be okay with whatever it is that you need to do. And that's what I do. And that's where I'm at right now. And it's all okay. It's really okay to be in that place. And so, when you're feeling like I was feeling like, why do I feel like I'm not moving, but I am moving. And I've had people say, I don't know how you can say you're not moving because that's all you do is move. You're constantly making massive changes in your life. You're constantly moving. But it's, it's how I've always perceived myself. Like I didn't move the mountain today and I don't need to move the mountain anymore. It's not my job. My job is to just sit and be and allow whatever it is, because isn't that part of what I want is I want to allow the information to come in when I feel, feel that it's time to move forward. I do because I'm in co-creation with spirit. When we're in co-creation with spirit, how do you think that works? You have to sit and be and allow you move as far as you can move. And when you don't know what to do, or you feel that overwhelm or you're tired, or you just feel kind of, Bleh, then you allow, you sit and you rest and you be. Now that doesn't mean you don't have to ask questions because say you do have a question, so you ask it. Or what is it that I need to do next? Or what am I supposed to do anything? And you just allow things to happen and unfold. And I have found in my past that if I don't feel like I can do something, I don't do it. I've just learned, even though I could have my head screaming at me, my business partner screaming at me, my life partner screaming at me. And it's just like, whatever. I It's water off a duck's back because they don't know what's going on inside of me. 
And then, then I always say, when it's time, I will get it done. I promise it will be done. The deadlines will be met. It's just not now. And you stand in that power. There's nothing anybody can do. What I found when I do that, if it takes a day, it takes two days, it takes three days, it doesn't matter. What I found is when I do that, when I come back, I am so fully charged that I move like three mountains because I've gotten so much done because I sat and allowed myself to be quiet. So when you're sitting being quiet and you allow that to happen, then when you come back into the world of you needing to be responsible for whatever it is you're responsible for, you can't, it's unbelievable how much you can get done. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. What I'm thinking is when we allow ourselves to be and we accept ourselves, of being who we are, the way we are, because we're all individuals. We all do things differently. We think differently than everybody else. We experiencing our lives differently. When we learn to accept that about ourselves and really dial in the uniqueness of us, you, you start to stop that comparison. And there's this one woman in, in, that I've been doing book signings with, and I, I, I love what she says. She said, yes, I'm an overnight success after 20 years of working on getting her books to be where they are today. And I love that because that's how I'm beginning to feel is that I'm an overnight success after 60 years of life. What do you do? We, we go through life. It's, you need to look back and reflect on your life. That's what you need to do. When you can do that, then you start seeing, well, what is it that's driving you? What are the common threads that are going in your life? Because when you look back at your life and you look at common threads, because you'll always have a common thread that's going through it. Well, that's where your meaning and your purpose comes from. Now, I remember I was just talking to somebody about this last week and said, I just didn't know how to connect the dots. I could see certain things that I did over and over, certain patterns I did over and over. I saw a lot of things, but I did. And then it was like, well, what's my purpose? And spirit would tell me what my purpose is, but it didn't make sense because I wasn't there yet. But yet when I look back at what spirit told me I was going to be doing now, it's not quite what they're saying, but it is very much what they're saying because I could, I didn't know anything back then about coaching or how to do that. All I knew is that I wanted to get on stages. I wanted to do certain things to get out there. And I, I know I'm going there. There's no doubt, but I have to find, but I'm going about it a little differently. And that's okay too, because that's what I need to do. That's what's going to make me feel safe enough to do it. Because, you know, if I just went out on a stage, all of a sudden, what if I'm not speaking to somebody? And I remember somebody saying that it was my, yeah, Kevin last week on the show said, well, I'm going to get on the stage. He's like, but I'm terrified to speak in front of people. Well, maybe if I talk in front of just two people and see what that does. And you build, you build yourself from that point forward. And that's what I'm exactly doing. So when I was told that, well, maybe you need to just get some people to help support you in what you're wanting to do and look at my network. And I thought, well, that makes a lot of sense. I'm not, I don't think I'm fully, I know what I need help on, but I'm not fully committed to where I'm going yet because I'm not sure if that's the right place yet. Just because we have an idea doesn't mean we have to follow through on it because is it in alignment with your core values? Is it in alignment with who you are and where you're going and what your vision is? If it's not, then you either put it on a back burner for another day, or if it is, then you start moving towards that. And that's what I've been doing a lot lately is really looking at my core beliefs. How do I feel about things? What is my soul vision? Because this is all about soul vision for me right now. And if I'm living that soul vision and does this fit in with that soul vision, the bigger picture of me, not just my 
physical goals or dreams or aspirations. This is the, the vision, the, re, the meaning and purpose of my life and why I was here. And how many of you can actually say, I have lived the best life, even though your life friggin' sucked. My life sucked. On so many levels, it sucked. And on so many levels, it wasn't. And I think this was the best design of my life I could have ever done for myself. Because that's a, pow that's a place of total empowerment. When you take total 100% responsibility of your life, and every decision that you went through, everything that ever happened in your life, it was all designed by you. No one else did this but you. And when you can say, I created the best life for myself to be where I am today, then you know that you have stepped into the true essence of you. Because I, I, I went years, years saying, I would never do this to myself. I would never do this to myself. I would never do this. Still. And I was adamant about it. And yet here I did. And here it is. Yes, I did. And it was the best thing I could have done for myself. And thank God. Thank God I did that because it's a full 100% remembrance. It's the total embodiment of that higher self that we talk about, that I'm making connections with spirit. I'm making connections with my higher self. I'm stepping into that powerful place. We are all Jesus Christ and Buddhas and Krishnas and everything else. We are every single one of us have that capability to be those master leaders. Every single one of us are capable of doing it. The question is, are you willing to do it? It's not easy work. It's hard work. There was a woman on the mastermind who was practically in tears of, I haven't lived in, she hadn't lived in her life. I mean, she is so out of alignment and she's like, whoa. And it's like, I can't just do this because I still have to pay my bills, but I'm not in alignment. And, you know, and she's working through the process and it's a beautiful thing. It sucks to be her right now. I know what that's like. I've been there. I've lived it. But it's a beautiful process because what she has now are people there supporting her. She's not alone and isolated like I felt, like a lot of people feel. She doesn't have that. She's got 100% support around her that are holding her up, that are helping her, giving her ideas, helping her maneuver through this very emotional part of herself. But this is what we do as we grow. We have to realize and heal those emotional ties. We have to look at why was she, you know, why was she running? Why was she doing everything out of alignment? Why did I do that? Why did, you know, why do you do that? Only you know the answer to those questions. Only she knows the answer to her questions. And only I know the answer to the questions that I asked. And most of mine was because I was running and I wanted to go home and I didn't want to be on this godforsaken planet. That's how I felt. I hated it here. I hated being here. I didn't like people and I love people. I mean, I didn't understand anything. All I knew is that I was just, I thought it was a very unsafe world. And I don't know how God could love us the way we treat each other. I mean, there were just so many things I could not even fathom to understand. And now I, I still don't understand. I don't know how God can love us the way he does. I really, because I can't, I can't do that. I aspire to try to do that, but I can't do that yet. But I would keep working on it a little bit more every day. But what I do know now is that this is not a God forsaken world. There's things that are happening that aren't good, but that doesn't mean the world is forsaken. I think there's a lot of beautiful people on this planet. I am meeting amazing people. The more I get out in the world, the more I change, the more I bring a different type of caliber of people to me. I'm not bringing, you know, the crazy sick people that want to hurt and abuse and manipulate. I'm not bringing those people in anymore. My vibration is too high. And that's the thing is that if you lift your vibration, your world starts changing. Yes, you might leave people behind, but are they worth taking along? Because sometimes these people aren't worth taking along. Can they hurt your feelings? Oh, yeah, they sure can. And can you feel bad about yourself? Yeah, you sure can. But the whole point is, is what's in the best interest of you? When you start putting yourself number one, that's when everything starts to change because you matter. You always matter. And you want to know why you matter? Because you are matter. Think about that.
I know when I heard that for the first time, I was like, wow, that makes perfect sense. I do matter because I am matter. I'm a physical being, just like you. So you matter. You wouldn't be here if you didn't matter. If you didn't have a reason to be here in this grand transition of our planet. And it's time for you guys to come out and do this. Oh my God. I know that you think that social media is the end all be all. You think if you have a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand people, big friggin' deal. They're not going to be in the hospital bed when you're dying. Your family will be. People who love you will be. The people on Facebook don't care about you. They don't know you. And it's never going to happen when you start making those physical connections where you make a heart connection with someone is when it's going to change. I actually had a tea with a gentleman last Thursday and he's in his twenties and I was telling him what I'm going to do. We do it. And he says, you got it right on the money. And I said, yeah. And I said, your phone is down and you and I are having a heartfelt connection and you want to know how we're having it because you opened up to me. You're not sitting here with your arms crossed. You're not sitting here like this. You are open to me. You're leaning into me. We're making eye contact and our hearts are connecting. That's a heart felt connection. When you talk from your heart, it makes all the difference in the world. I was on a call yesterday with a gentleman who's coming on my show. He's an LA black man. Okay. Never been to jail, had horrific child abuse in his life. And what, what did the two of us talk about? Our perceptions of what I was raised with, with black people and his perceptions of how TV portrayed white people. And we talked about how those things that we were taught or shown or spoken to about and how wrong they were. So we're probably going to have a conversation about opening that dialogue about, I don't care what the color of your skin is. You still feel, you still want your family. You still want your kids to have a good education. You don't want to be in this drive-by shooting, but yet we were talking about how cultures create a subset within their culture. Cause I told him, I said, you know, I was, when I was in the drug rehab, I said, there were, there were black people in there. Okay. Some of them came out of the prison systems and they would scare the hell out of you when you met them because they were big burly black guys that you would never want to meet in an alley alone. And they were the biggest teddy bears on the world in the, on the planet. But yet what I found sometimes is when they got in with the group of them, of other black men, then they got into this funky jive crap that they do. And, you know, belittle and shamed each other. And I said, why do you do that? And he said, you know, my mother asked me that, that we did that too. And he said, I, it's just like something we do, but see, these are patterns that we have to look at and break as well. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial. Welcome back everyone to the journey of an awakening spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the bold brave TV network. Before the commercial break, what I'm was wanting to really say is it's time that we start having the hard conversations. It's time that we start looking at what do we think and what do we feel and what do we believe in. It's time to stop listening to media, social media, the hate that's out there and learn to just learn to accept and love people. That's what you want. That's what everybody wants. And it's time to stop all of this BS that people get into because it doesn't make any sense. It never did. I am not you. You are not me. You do not want my life any more than I probably want your life. And because some we can look at somebody and think, oh my God, they have the best life or they're millionaires or billionaires or whatever. We still don't know their life and their life may not be wonderful. And the reason I can say that is I lived in, in Nevada and I remember I was in Las Vegas one time and I watched somebody put thousand dollar coins into a slot machine. And I was dumbfounded because money had no value. They had no value. Money meant nothing. They had no connection. They were alone and they're putting a thousand dollar coin in a slot machine. Who does that? When the, when the guy hit, I mean, hearing a thousand dollar coins clink was like, whoa, but he didn't even care. 
because it was just something to do and he was unconscious. And I'm sitting here going, God, what I could do with that kind of money, what this could help so many other people than throwing it away to a casino. Okay. You've got to look at the reality of life. You've got to look at that person who was doing that because I did. It was shocking to me that somebody could feel that way because at that point I was what in my early thirties. And what did I know? You know, I'm still working on building a career and making money and doing things. And I moved to Nevada to follow my partner at the time because there was work in Nevada where there wasn't in any in, in Colorado. And then I'm ending up working in a casino. I mean, hello, it just, none of that computed, but it was a beautiful opportunity for me to start thinking outside the box because, you know, as a paralegal, and you know, there's, there's a little stigma that goes around being a paralegal and you know, you don't think your poop stinks and all of that a little bit because you know, you're working for these really big fancy law firms and you're making more money than most people are making. But that, but that didn't mean I was happy. That didn't mean my life was wonderful because it wasn't. So you've got to start looking at what's going to make you happy and do it. What makes you smile? and do that because that's where life is. That's where life needs to go. Well, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I do apologize that my guest couldn't make it on. She said she had internet connections, I found out. And anyways, I, I just wanna invite you to like and subscribe to the channel. If you liked what you received today, I'd love for you to send the link on to your friends and family if you got something of value out of this. My books, Dancing Souls, The Call, The Dark Night of the Soul, and Awakened are on Amazon.com and Kathleen M. Flanagan. So you can get them there. And if you want to on Amazon, the ebook is still free. So you're welcome to go there and download the book. And I'd love to have you write a review and let's have a conversation if you want to talk about it, that kind of thing. Go ahead and check out Kathleen M. Flanagan for the list of services and products that are being offered there. And I do have a three minute de-stress meditation that is available absolutely free. Be sure to visit Awakening Spirit and Grandma's Natural Remedies and enter Brave TV into the coupon code so you can get the discounts. And um, that pretty much concludes our show for today. And um, I, I will see you all next week at 4 p.m. And from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week.